Hey guys, Edward Halterman, Office of the Pacific. I hope you all are having an awesome 2020. Happy New Year to everybody. So this next one is a radio interview I did with Philip Friedman Outdoor Radio. And Philip was a good buddy of mine. He formerly was the owner of 976 Tuna. Um, him and I have been buds for a long time, so he's just a stellar guy. And Phil, if you're watching this, thanks brother. Anyway, a lot of good times. So this is about halibut fishing, and it's some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. And it's kind of almost going to be like a seminar situation because sometimes I'm going to show some cutaways of video of techniques and stuff that I've used over the years to, to catch these fish. So, and I'm also going to show some pictures of what I've caught. Um, there's a lot of fish I actually didn't take pictures of, hundreds of them. <laughs> so, but uh, unfortunately, but you'll get the gist of it. So anyway, enjoy. Hey, Edward, the Halibut Derby is this weekend, and you know, you've been fishing halibut a lot of years. You've got a lot of great tips. Why don't you just start folks off and tell them, especially with all this wind and weather and current, you're probably going to have to fish a lot of sinker, and a lot of people are weary about that. They think if they fish too heavy a weight that the halibut are going to let go of the bait. Nothing could be further from the truth, right? Oh, that's a fact. I mean... Especially now with this wind going to be probably on us tomorrow. I mean, you definitely want to fish 10 to 16 ounces is great because uh, you want to keep it right down in the halibut's uh, bite radius because uh, typically it's not as big as people think. I mean, I would say it's around, you know, 6 to 8 feet. In other words, if you're not on the bottom, you're not getting bit. And, and with all this wind, and we're going to have a lot of it, you're going to have to really, really, really put some weight on there. Yeah, I mean, I would even start off just uh, fishing like a 12 ounce and just kind of see how that goes. Most people like to fish them with a lighter weight, and they think that the bait is on the bottom, but it's uh, far from the truth. I mean, you get, you know, just a couple knots drift going, and that bait's coming right off the bottom, and people don't even realize it. And it's kind of sad because they're missing a lot of fish. And, and these commercial guys, when they're fishing halibut, they're all using heavy stuff, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I learned uh, from some of the best commercial guys out there, and if, if you look at how they do it, Religiously, I mean, they, they're at 12 to 16 ounces, like, constantly. And also, they, they fish the trap rig. A lot of people like to fish the single hook, but the trap rig, uh, what happens is a lot of times the halibut will do what's called a short bite. And that's when you pull up your bait because you got bit, and you see the rake marks. And what happens is when the bait flies by and they snap at it, they just grab it on the tail. And uh, if you don't fish the trap, you're not going to get those fish. So it's very important to fish the trap. Can, can you describe the trap rig for everybody out there? Yeah, sure. Basically, I use about a uh, 18 to 24 inch leader. I got a swivel at the top. The bottom, I usually like to fish a uh, number six a Mustad treble on um, the extra strong version. That's very good. And then on the top, I fish a owner SSW, usually a four out to a five out. I like to fish the bigger hooks. And you want to. Uh, tie the treble at the bottom, obviously, and then you want about a six-inch gap between the, uh, the SSW hook. You want to tie, you know, do the old snail and all that stuff at the top. Then after that, I would, me personally, I like to fish the torpedo, like I said, you know, preferably 12 to 16 ounce. Tie about a, I'd say about a four-inch leader with a swivel on that. Stick that first, you know, through the loop there and, and put it in your line so it kind of just you know, drags along with your line there and then tie the bottom one off and you're good to go. Excellent. And, and are you big on fluorocarbon or not? Is that something no, that you... that's, that's another misnomer. We've actually had video cameras on the bottom filming these fish and they are not line shy. That's a big, that's a big misnomer out there. They'll, they'll eat anything. They, they don't even care about the line. They're straight up predators. I mean, when they see that bait, they're just going to slam it. I mean, you can fish... I mean, I know guys talk about fishing smaller hooks and all that, but believe me, I've, I've fished them seven knots just the same. <laughs> I've caught just as many fish. So um, I fish them with straight 40. That's what I like. Most of the commercial guys, I mean, they're anywhere from 30 to 40, you know, at least the guys that I've talked to. Another thing I like to do is I like to tie all my rigs ahead of time. So usually when I go out there, i got about 30 rigs already assembled because, uh, you know, if, if something happens and you start losing rigs for whatever reason... You know, maybe you're fishing too close to an edge of a reef or whatever. you got to have all those, you know, tied up so that way you don't waste no time, especially during derby time. Right, right. Now, how about bait selection? Are you going to fish squid, sardine, mackerel? I mean, I've even heard of guys dropping a lizard fish down there. 
yeah, the old lizard fish. That works well too. You know, for this tournament, I would I would really try to go down and I'd, I'd catch some mackerel, you know, down the Redondo Way there off the pier, you know, and get those mackerel set up because it seems to me like the bigger fish are obviously going to eat the bigger baits. That's a real key right now because especially when it's the big fish that matters, um, I would fish the mackerels. Uh, religiously and on that rig i mean you basically want the same setup but you want the bigger hooks you know i'd probably go a, a one out trouble in the back and then probably a 7-0 uh ssw in the front there on the mackerel and uh, you want to leave enough tag line so you know when the mackerel does his kick he, he doesn't kick the hook out in other words you want a little bit of line hanging there so he can kind of go with it you know what i'm saying um that seems to work really good um and then on those you want to let him eat it because, uh, you know, the first thump on, on a mackerel, you know, is, is it could be the tail. You know, he could have it in his mouth. But generally, he's just going to kind of woof it down, you know, like, you know, kind of slurp that damn thing. And it's going to take him a few seconds to really get it going on. So I would just, on that particular fishing style, I'd kind of leave it out of gear and just uh, let him go, 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 give it plenty of time. And then... You know, you're just going to have to have the magic touch on that one. There's no rocket science there. You just got to kind of get the feel on it and then, you know, set the hook. So the other way fishing the sardines, I would suggest just leaving your rod in the rod holder itself, especially when you fish the heavy weights, because when it's in the rod holder, it's it's a no-brainer. And when the, when the fish bites, you know, the, the whiplash of the weight just kind of jams the hook in his mouth, so it's not like... You know, you, you want to swing on the fish or anything like that because it's already in there. You just start winding, you know. Um, a lot of these guys like to fish them on these weights uh, in free spool, and basically when they bite, when they're in free spool, they're letting the fish take their bait, you know. I mean, it's a lot harder, obviously, if you're fishing a trap, but if you're fishing a single hook and, you, you know, you're out of gear there, boy, that's going to be a difficult day. <laughs> And uh, are you are you fishing? So so you're going to fish out of gear sometimes and in gear other times. The yeah, with with mackerel, I like to do it because you know if you got it in gear with a bigger bait and they got to take their time and kind of woof it down, it doesn't make any sense to kind of leave it in gear because you know it's going to potentially if if he's got it bit in the wrong spot, you're going to have a long day. So those those on those mackerel, they really like to take their time and. Not always are you going to get that back, you know, treble in their mouth. Sometimes they'll bite it right in the middle, and they'll just leave it in their mouth, and you know, just happy as clams laying on the ground. And you will lift up, and there's nothing there. <laughs> you know, we've talked a lot about fishing bait, trap rigs, and everything. How about artificials? Do you like fishing plastics or anything else? Uh, for me personally, I don't, um, just because you know all these commercial guys. When I see them fishing, I mean, you know, you hear the bounce balling which actually might be pretty good for tomorrow because now the water's going to be all kind of mucked up. So that wouldn't be a bad technique with the flasher rig, and, you know, that'll create a lot more uh, reflections on the bottom. And, and uh, plus you get the pounding of the weight, believe it or not, that attracts the halibut. They hear the, the pounding when you keep lifting up on the bounce ball technique and the, and the you know, weight hits the bottom. They actually hear that down there. It's kind of crazy. Can you go into a little detail describing that whole method and how that works? And, and Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's basically a, a lot to do with the same setup that I just said, except you want to use, I don't know, I'd probably say like about an 8-inch tagline. Now, we're talking like how we had the treble set up there. You want to use a flasher rig. Just like, it looks like a bike reflector, basically, or something. Um, it's silver. It, you know, creates some, some light down there. And then on the back of that, a lot of these guys use what's called a, a hoochie rig. And then, you know, basically that's it. And, and you, you put that darn thing against the rail there and just kind of lift up on it every so often and, and drop it back down. And, you know, it kind of basically what it does is it hits the bottom, kicks up the sand, creates the sound of, of the weight hitting the bottom. And then there's obviously the flasher rig, which, you know, just the flash attracts them as well. And the halibuts kind of go to see what's going on and, the cool thing is when that darn uh, weight hits the sand, it usually kicks it up. So the halibut sees the flash, and then the sand's flying over the top, and it kind of gives it a little bit of a disguise so when he eats, he doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> you know? Excellent, excellent. The perfect world, you know? Exactly. And a anything else that you've been doing this a long time, I've seen a lot of these big flatties. What else can you tell people? Like I said, the, the main thing, well, tomorrow bring your parachutes, number one. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep that boat kind of going a little mellow. I, I've kind of been reading it. it. Might even gust up to 25 knots tomorrow. So, 
that's going to create some problems. But basically for tomorrow, I would fish mackerels for sure. I would fish heavy weights. Now, if you're going to fish mackerels, I mean, you want a lot heavier weight. I mean, I would, I would start at a pound and then, you know, even a little bit over that, you know, because that's going to be the tournament winner. Because the biggest ones that I've hooked over 40 pounds were all on mackerels. So, you know, that's the old adage, the bigger fish like the bigger baits. You know, sometimes you'll get you'll get one on a sardine, like a real big one, you know, 30-plus, but fish the mackerels, guys, and fish heavy, heavy weights. I can't tell you enough how important that is. I've just seen these guys over and over on party boats or whatnot, you know, fishing these two to four ounces, and, and I'm saying, is that weight on the bottom? And they're saying, yeah, and I'm looking at it, and the line's going straight out parallel to the top. Of the <laughs> so we know that's not on the bottom. So do that and fish the trap rig no matter what because you're going to increase your, your bite success, I mean, tremendously. It's very important. So, you know, I know there's a lot of guys out there that don't like to fish those because sometimes when you hook a shorty, you know, it's kind of hard on the fish. But, hey, it's tournament time, guys, so let it rip. And uh, one other thing, you mentioned a parachute. You're talking about a sea anchor, correct? Exactly, correct, yes, because, you know, you're going to want to slow that boat down if, if you're cruising too fast. Even those heavier weights, I mean, you know, it, it, you should try it sometime, you know, just when you're out there, maybe, you know, put it in gear and, and maybe, you know, cruise at 10 knots and just kind of see what that does with your weight, you know, and uh, and kind of test it that way. But, uh, yeah, these gusts are going to be kind of hard tomorrow. So. It's going to make it difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to make it real difficult. And then you got the backwash, you know, of, of all this rain and stuff, and it's going to create kind of murky conditions out there. So, you know, definitely fish, you know, probably 70 to 90 feet seems to be good. And then, obviously, you want to you wanna fish the incoming and outgoing tides. Um, that's that's important as well because that obviously kicks on their, their bite frenzy a lot more. I like to normally fish them an hour uh, before and an hour after the high tide. That's a great time to fish them. So, guys, be in position around that time. <laughs> hey, guys, wanted to give you guys a tip that nobody else has given before halibut bite like crazy on a low pressure system so try it sometime it's never failed me once in my life every time i've caught a legal halibut at least one on a low pressure system uh, there was one time i actually got eight legals so it was all catch and release after number five so <laughs> anyway yeah so try that it's uh, it's some good information that you guys can utilize to to catch more halibut so next time a storm comes up that's always a low pressure go for it all right cool later also, as a footnote, you know, in all these TV shows and movies, I'd always see them uh, raising a glass, or a shot glass for that matter. Never really got it until I lost my Uncle Bill and my brother Kevin, so now I get it. So, anyway, since this is a new year, Happy New Year's, everybody. Bill and Kev, rock on. Not much of a drinker, so if I start crying, that's why. But, uh... Anyway, and everyone, uh, thanks for your support. You know, this hasn't been easy losing my Uncle Bill and my brother Kev. It's been really devastating, but I really appreciate everybody's support. It means a lot. You know, thanks so much for your kind words and everything, and people that have reached out to me on the side. It really means a lot. So everybody have an awesome 2020. Enjoy it, and live every minute like it could be it, because it will be at some point. So just enjoy every moment you have. And... Uh, that shot I did is kind of hitting my throat. <laughs> but anyway, shows you how much of a drinker I am. Let me show you something. Anyway, all right, enjoy. Rock on. Yeah.